Welcome to episode negative 9 of Successful Demo. Each episode analyze the theory and practical aspects of one or more existing cards. Today we'll be looking at the breaker, Fairy. Now, <coughs> this is an amazing breaker. Despite being printed in the Genesis cycle, it has survived rotation twice, both by the revised core set <coughs> and by system core 2019. So it must be a pretty good breaker. <coughs> um, people think it's pretty well designed. Well, well designed enough to warrant it staying in the game. So, Fairy is actually not just a well-designed breaker, it's also possibly the most efficient Sentry breaker ever printed. If you compare its numbers to other top-tier breakers now, like Nanot K, um, <coughs> MK Ultra. I mean, I'm not even sure MK Ultra is top-tier, but, you know, <coughs> Fairy's numbers just blow all these breakers out of the water. The question is, why? Is fairy being <coughs> basically unplayed nowadays? You don't really see even criminal decks running fairy, let alone splashed in other factions. I see two reasons for this, and I'll analyze. I'll break it down by the general use case why fairy isn't strong in general, and the niche case where fairy is used in uh, specialized decks, and why even fairy doesn't make the cut in said specialized decks. So let's talk about the general case first. Fairy in general requires too many deck slots just to break a single ice type in sentries. This is not accept acceptable in the current day and age where card draw and money, especially early on, is so important for runners to the point where you want to saturate your deck with as many basic economy cards as possible. So fairy is competing with these cards for slots and it's very hard to justify fairy over those basic cards. We are talking about one deck slot every time you break a sentry during the course of the game. So when deck building you have to ask yourselves on average how many times will you need to break sentries? And the answer is a fair number of times. Um, <coughs> you know, six is you know, arguably not enough, but even then, if you're planning to break sentry six times, you need six deck slots for, um, you know, like three clone ships and three fairies to break sentry six times. That's unacceptable um, when you can just be running a single Nanot K uh, and have five other deck slots for money anyways. So this is the main reason why you just don't see fairy running around nowadays. Um, the other uh, side reason is that uh, fairy you know, only tackles one subtype, which is a problem because runners have to worry about code gates as well nowadays. It used to be, back in the day, that sentries were the only painful ice. Back when DNA Tracker and Fairchild 3 did not exist, sentries were the most punishing face checks and having fairy in your arsenal was very powerful for mitigating ice face checks. That is not the case nowadays and this is why while fairy was played in the past, in criminal run based decks, it no longer is. Right? Only against Waylon would Fairy, you know, see much of, uh, you know, um, would be nice, sh should I say, because they don't have that many dangerous code gates. Uh, meanwhile, the sentries are very dangerous. For the other three factions, the code gates are, you know, just as dangerous, if not more, than the in faction sentries. So, yeah, Fairy's relevance has just been dipping as time has gone on, as the card pool has expanded, especially on the co-op side. Now, there are some niche decks which could use Fairy. Those are the decks that, um, you know, uh, rely on uh, disposable breakers as their primary means of breaking ice. So, you know, Geist decks come into mind here. The reason why Fairy doesn't really see playing Geist decks is simply because Fairy does not synergize with Geist at all. Um, Geist requires your card to have a trash can ability. And while Fairy does trash itself on breaking ice, it does not explicitly have the trash can icon. Hence, it does not trigger Geist's ability. The lack of synergy there means that even in a Geist deck, you would probably want to run Shiv, the um, you know the uh, the Sentry Breaker in the Home uh, Breaker Suite as opposed to Fairy. Um, if you're trying to run Fairy in a disposable breaker suite out of faction, like in a Haley deck, you know, you can get pretty good mileage out of installing two fairies in a single click. However, at the cost of three influence per pop, it's just too expensive to splash out of faction. That's more than half your influence allowance for breaking a single subtype of ice once again. So that's just not gonna fly. And this is why Fairy just doesn't see any play. 
uh, that's not gonna stop us from trying though. Today we are gonna showcase Fairy being used as a support breaker for Armor Kua. It makes a lot of sense because um, Fairy allows you to get past sentries early and survive the phase checks while getting successful runs with which to charge your Armor Kua. They both complement each other uh, because Armor Kua cannot always be used to break sentries and Fairy can only be used a certain number of times. So you add two and two together, you get a pretty good sentry breaker suite and a pretty efficient one at that. There are not many other sentry breaker suites that can break sentries for cheaper than Armor Core and Fairy. Um, that being said, it's still possible to be sentry locked uh, with this deck, we are running the same 419 deck from the previous video where we did a successful demo on R&D interface. So uh, these being our only sentry breakers, we are not running Femme Fatale. Um, it is possible that uh, once our opponent forces all of our fairies out and then purges the Omaqua, we can no longer break sentries. But hopefully by, by that time, uh, we would have enough agenda points to win or if not, at match points so that we can Hail Mary our way through sentries. At the end of the day, sentries, do most of them don't end the run. So, you know, we can still possibly poss possibly take face checks. That's one of the fun parts of playing Netrunner. Playing on a knife's edge, not breaking ice and, you know, making risks here and there so that we can get those successful runs for our successful demo. <laughs> Today we are facing off against Argus. Now normally this opening hand would be a keep. You want to see Omakua a special order in there so that you can get your 419 triggers charging up your Omakua. But against Argus, I'm looking for as much disposable income as possible because I'm very worried worried of the inevitable hard hitting news. So double career fair uh, with no daily cast or earth rise just doesn't cut it. So I mulligan into a cash and Omakua which was Rather acceptable, I would say. So, um, I'm just going to spend my first turn setting up. In fact, I'm going to spend most of my early game setting up, allowing my opponent to get up to three, maybe even four agenda points because I desperately need to, you know, have a stable econ engine going with at least 10 credits before I can start contesting my opponent's board. With economic warfare into hard-hitting news, um, running early is sweet side, even for this run-based criminal deck. Now, my opponent just plays a whole bunch of money cards. They started turn 1 with a too big to fail, followed by an IPO. So yeah, they are filthy rich, so I need to match that with money of my own. Thankfully, I draw into Aesop's early on, so that's my engine settled. And my opponent um, uh, starts icing up R&D. <clears throat> now, over to me. Uh, this is going to be my third turn and I'm actually kind of happy because usually by turn 3, most Argus decks will have already pushed out a hostile takeover or begin to score the Atlas at, uh, over advanced. My opponent's not doing any of that at all. They're simply drawing cards and taking credits, playing a very, very slow game, um, which I was very surprised by. This can only mean good things for me. As long as my opponent doesn't threaten agendas, I do not need to run at all. All I need to do is to sit back play all my economy cards. The daily cards from my hand, that's going on the table. Paragon, that's also going on the table so that when I do begin running, I can immediately start getting payoffs. My opponent installs an agenda in the remote here so I expose it. <laughs> what the f***? That is really mean. Using my 419 exposability against me with Psychic Field. Anyway, I won the side game. So... Unfortunately, my opponent is still ma amassing big bucks. Um, they play another IPO, as you will soon see. And, you know, at this point, I'm going like, I've played a couple of money cards and I'm still nowhere near um, stage required to make runs because I'm just too poor to fend off against economic warfare plus hard-hitting news. We'll see if my Earthrise Hotel and crowdfunding actually draw me any anything of note this time. Right, um, yeah, I mean, even if I got hit by the Psychic Field there, wouldn't have been the end of the world, I would have lost all my cards, some of which were useful, like the Deuces Wow and the Diversion of Funds, but I do draw three cards at the start of my turn, and I see more Deuces Wilds. Now, Deuces Wild is great, but I need to keep it for the Expose and potentially for the Tag Removal, rather than just, you know, drawing cards and taking money with it. And I can't use the Expose and Run ability now because I'll just leave myself open to hard-hitting news. 
I can't use falsified credentials here either, very annoyingly. The only target, only potential target for it is a psychic field, which I do not really wish to expose again. So, um, all I can do here is to use special order to fetch a fairy. Fairy will be very, very useful against the archers I'm anticipating against Argus. And yeah, well, it's, um, you know, the... It's the uh, star of the show today, being a successful demo on Fairy and all. So my opponent installs a second ice on the remote, de declining the expose. From now on, my opponent can simply decline all my 419 exposes because they're so filthy rich. At this point, I don't draw money cards, so I look at my deck and sure enough, there's something missing. Where are my bloody sure gambles? I think I may have made a deck building error there. Yeah, so that pretty much explains why my hand is saturated with useless cards and I'm still stuck without enough money to run after 6 turns of gameplay. In any other competitive situation, I would be dead in the water right now, but because my opponent hasn't even scored a single agenda, I might actually have a chance here. I'm gonna take some... Just click for credits, because that's what I badly need here, and ditch my airbag nail, and my falsified credentials, which is the most logical discard, because uh, I probably won't be exposing any agendas here. Now, my opponent double advances the ice on the uh, remote, and that's where I realize I screwed up big time. By putting my only decoder in the bin, in airbag nail, I've lost any ability to break triple advance Hortums. Those will end the run, and end the run very hard. I'm in a lot of trouble here. So I quickly rack up my Omakua and get to work on centrals before my opponent can start chaining agendas and remotes. I'm going to expose the HQ Ice, I saw Arch on HQ, and then I'm going to run Archives here uh, for an Omakua trigger, but I hit two Breach Domes! Oh shite! That is really, really bad. Thankfully, the Breach Dome uh, hit two, the two cards that I was uh, willing to give up. I needed to keep the second useless wild for another shot at exposing, and I needed to keep the emergency shutdown to de-rest the archer. At this point, I make a crucial gameplay error. I should be running HQ very hard at this point. In fact, on the useless wild run, I should have ran HQ. I did not realize that to res archer, you actually need to forfeit an agenda, and my opponent doesn't have one yet. I'm so used to Argus having a hostile takeover already scored by mid-game. So I assumed the archer was going to hit me, and I didn't want to use my fairy on a sing on a regular deuces wild run. So that was a mistake, I definitely should have ran HQ there. Anyway, I expose the next HQ ice, my opponent knows that the archer isn't going to fly, so I see a surveyor on the outside of HQ. Now, surveyor isn't really an ice I want to deal with right now, um, I but with Omakua at 4 strength, thanks to the expose, I can actually break the surveyor. And now that I've realized my mistake, I'm going to run HQ knowing that they can't break the archer. So I'm going to break Surveyor for 2 credits, the archer cannot, cannot be res. Successful run, I'm going to see uh, Paragon uh, expo uh, revealing Diversion of Funds, which I keep. And then a too big to fail. Normally you'd trash this, but well, my opponent's too rich to play it, and I, I, want, I want the Omakua counter. So after that, uh, with the Deuces Wild card draw, I'm able to draw the diversion of funds I saw off the Paragon, allowing me to siphon my opponent. And for the last click, I'm going to run HQ normally. This is the third run of the turn, allowing me to trigger crowdfunding installs from the bin and steal a city works project while at it. Since this is the last click, I'm forced to take 2 meat damage, losing a fairy from my hand. But I do get the crowdfunding back on the deck from, from the bin as my opponent clears virus counters. So no more running for me. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know what the R&D ice is. HQ has a surveyor which is too difficult to defeat, and Archives is a no-go with two breach domes in there. This is a nasty deck, this hard counters a run-based deck because my opponent doesn't need to dedicate any ice on Archives at all to shield it. With two breach domes in there, it's far too unpalatable to run it just to charge up armor cores. So I'm in a, a big big pickle here because I can't even play for the late game. Despite having my money engine finally set up, I can't use the money to break ice because I threw my main breakers in the bin. No airbag nails for me. I can only break barriers using money. The Corroda in my hand immediately gets installed here. I don't want to lose it to damage. But unfortunately, the damage might have already been done as my opponent sees the opening and now begins to put what seems like agendas in server 1. Not advancing it, but I know I can't get in if that's an outermost Hortum. So that's really bad for me. 
Now, I'm just going to risk it here, risk it for the biscuit, and run the only possible server I have a chance of breaking through, R&D, which is also locked out because Enigma. It's uh, ice I don't have the correct breaker for. Omakuo's not at strength, and my decoder's in the bin with no way to retrieve it. I think this game is over. Even though I have 3 points, I'm 3 points up against my opponent's 0, I cannot make any headway into R&D or the remote, assuming that's a remote Hortum. HQ is kind of firmly locked out, uh, the sentries are too expensive to get through. But then I realized Surveyor can be traced through, so that is my last ditch hope here. I don't run HQ here and trace through the Surveyor immediately because um, this would put me at a very bad credit standing, I will most likely get hit by economic warfare and hard hitting news. Um, instead, I'm going to charge up by dropping a cash, going to ESOPs it, going to get some crowdfunding money next turn, and then I'm going to slam HQ. Now here, I'm praying hard, sitting in my seat, quivering and hoping that my opponent doesn't ice HQ. I dodge a bullet there as my opponent puts an ice on R&D instead of HQ. HQ ice would be bad because I would have to deal with an additional ice in addition to the plus 2 trace strength on both surveyor subroutines, and that's really bad. Um, so yeah, my opponent just took 2 credits and ice on R&D, so this is my time to strike HQ. While my opponent has no agendas and only a 4 strength surveyor, it's time to go. Run HQ here. Even though I have a fairy that can break the surveyor, I want to save it because I might need to deal with archers at a future date. Or, you know, uh, you know, fairies are just generally useful. I only have one copy left in my deck, so gotta preserve it as much as possible. Since I'm filthy rich, I can afford to pay into the tracers. It's 3 credits each trace because I have one base link. That helps out very much the one base link. Paragon sees crowdfunding. I'm gonna keep it there. Gonna access one card, Economic Warfare, confirming my opponents on a hard hitting new strategy. Gonna go again, HQ second time. Note that here I'm going to aim for crowdfunding trigger once again. Trying to get all my crowdfundings from the bin. Gonna trace through the surveyor for a second time as my opponent doesn't boost the trace. Maybe they shoot here to uh, and, um, you know keep both of us poor, that way a hard hitting news would be more impactful. Anyway, I run through HQ, see an SSL endorsement bringing me up to 6 gender points. Very interesting here. Now, um, obviously I take the meat damage here. A tag would slow me down too much um, you know, to be of any good, and anyway my hand is mostly trash. All money cards that I don't really need at this point. So, 2 meat damage later, I have 2 clicks remaining, where shall I go? Uh, in initially, I intended to run R&D, but without the 2 strength Omakua, because I just stole an agenda, I don't get the second Omakua counter, I'm forced to run HQ for my 3rd click, and I see a hostile takeover that anticlimatically closes out the game. Alrighty, before we began the playthrough, I talked about Fairy's roll index, let's relook at <coughs> uh, the same thing, this time with the game in mind. Um, even though we only used Fairy once throughout the entire game, it played a pivotal role in winning us the game. Um, it allowed us to run with a lot, you know, uh, a lot more aggressively even after an armor core purge, right? Think of the uh, turn immediately following the purge. Um, I had to run R and D because HQ was blocked by a surveyor that I couldn't break, and Archives was blocked by Breach Dome. So I face check into the Enigma, sure, bounced off, lost a click, no big deal. But what if the R&D ice turned out to be a destroyer? Something like a sapper or a cobra. Without fairy, I would have been basically done right there and then. I would be forced to dig through my deck to find my next Omakua if I even had one left. And that would be a huge time waster and at the end of the day, I wouldn't even be able to run R&D anymore because, uh, yeah, the Omakua would just get trashed. So fairy is a very important... Um, you know, get out of jail free card that really allowed me to poke my opponent's servers and play a lot more aggressively, allowing me to win the game. Um, even though I wasn't able to get through R and D with Fairy, um, it gave me the option to run there. Uh, and who knows, that could have been a barrier that I could have bro broken instead. You will also notice that Fairy played uh served as a pseudo economy card in the one time where I actually used it to break ice. Uh, take a look at uh, this, the final turn where I fetched the winning hostile takeover. This was the final run of the game. Um, I was on 17 credits plus 1 bad publicity when I made the winning HQ run. I had two choices here, I could pay through the trace as usual, which would set me back 5 credits. Um, this would be quite bad because that would leave me down to 12 credits uh, and that, you know, makes it very tempting for my opponent to land economic warfare into hard hitting news. If it were double economic warfare into hard hitting news, my game is done. 
because I would have no way to clear the tags in time. Uh, and yeah, that's just game. Instead, with Fairy on the table, it served as you know a pseudo economy card where it reduced the breaking cost of Surveyor from six credits, uh, trace, for, uh, three to break each trace times two. Um, instead, uh, Fairy allowed me to break. Uh, surveyor for two credits instead of six and that's a very big deal it's almost like a sure gamble so you know saving money against Argus every single credit counts speaking of sure gamble if you were to copy my deck please 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 add some sure gambles in don't copy my deck card for card you will regret it when you don't draw your money uh, not playing sure gambles is definitely a mistake even though it seems like the other money cards uh, provide more long-term value, you definitely want the sure gambles early, as you could very much struggle against hard-hitting news decks without that burst economy. Uh, I recommend either one of the recommended cards, you pick one of the options that you prefer. Either you remove the Katie Jones, which I've never used in this deck in the times I've played it, along with the third Paragon and the one emergency shutdown, either that or you remove the ESOPs engine entirely, no more caches, no more ESOPs, instead you're just playing pure run base with Sure Gamble. Uh, I would recommend picking one of those options and swapping out those cards for Sure Gambles. Uh, the ESOPs option comes with the upside of freeing up 6 influence. Right, so that's all up to you. I think this would be a very instructive exercise in uh, customizing a deck to your liking. Uh, in this case, I'm already posing you the problem with the deck. It needs sure gambles. How to fix it? I'll leave it up to you. You can take one of my recommended cuts or cut some cards of your own. Um, other recommended cards I would say you should include in this deck as well are Legwork, which would have outright won me the game. You saw um, I basically fetch all my opponent's agendas from HQ. Uh, Legwork would have swiftly and decisive decisively won me the game had I ran that card. Instead, my hand was saturated with emergency shutdowns that I couldn't really play because my opponent wasn't raising big ice. The other option is a Femme Fatale as and yet another backup breaker. Um, you know, it also gives you staying power against sentry heavy decks. So yeah, you do consider these cards. Um, this deck's by no means refined or perfect. And uh, while it's a very good and fun deck to play, I would recommend, you know, uh, improving on it with iterations. Now before we end off, since this is a successful demo on Fairy, let's talk about some Fairy combos. First off, Fairy combos very nicely with the basically never played breaker, Baba Yaga. Uh, yeah, you might need to read the text to recall what it does, but basically you host a bunch of breakers including Fairy and suddenly you have a monster of an AI icebreaker because Baba Yaga can then use Fairy's zero credit to break sentry subroutine to basically break sentries for free as long as you have enough strength. Um, the only problem with this is, well, there's none, because uh, even though Fairy does trash itself once you use the Break Sentry Subroutine ability, if you use it on Baba Yaga, it ignores the trash program um, clause because the self-referential text that says Trash Fairy, let me underline that. You know, this is the biggest downside of Fairy, the fact that it trashes itself. But this clause does not apply when the text is copied over to Baba Yaga because this is a self-referential text. Uh, the word fairy here refers to the card itself, fairy. But when the text is copied over to Baba Yaga, it tries to reference itself and fails because this card is not fairy, it's Baba Yaga. So you basically ignore the entire text. Uh, and the anchor rules basically confirm that in the self-referential section. If you don't believe me, go look it up. Otherwise, take my word for it. The next combo is Dummy Box, or basically anything that protects against program trashing. Because Fairy is worded in such a way that it's not a cost. Trash Fairy is not a cost. It's not worded as, you know, trash can, uh, 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 trash can, colon, uh, break ice. You know, it's not written this way and I apologize for my uh, absolutely atrocious handwriting. I'm using a mouse here, but basically, because it's not worded this way, it is not a cost and as such, you can break ice while still preventing the trash of fairy and it'll still go through. So that's a good synergy to give your fairies more longevity. Next up, another combo is Wasteland. Now I did talk about how Armand Geist and cards like Tech Trader are non-bows because they reference uh, trash can symbols which fairy doesn't have. Well, Wasteland is one of those cards that encourages you to trash your own cards but doesn't reference trash can symbols. It just says 
trash. So Fairy does trash itself, so it will trigger Wasteland, and that's a nice combo to have. Finally, um, Fairy works very well in a Professor deck. If at any point or for any whatever weird reason you are forced to play the Professor, do consider splashing one of Fairy. Because as I mentioned, uh, one of the biggest downsides to playing Fairy in Shaper, like a Haley deck, is that you are spending more than half your influence on it. But in the Professor, you have unlimited influence. Well, at least for your first copy of Fairy. So playing a single copy of Fairy in the Professor works very well as your emergency solution to sentries and can be recurred multiple times still uh, with your Shaper card of choice, be it Clone Chip or Dummy Box. Uh, not to mention that, as you saw this game, Fairy works very well as a pseudo-economy card, which is really good in Professor, which because uh, you, know, you can't splash for money cards uh, as the Professor. So having Fairy in your arsenal is really, really nice, and I would definitely consider running one copy of it at the very least, in, or rather exactly one copy in any Professor deck. Right, so that's the beauty of Fairy, all in all. Um, you can see that there are so many different combos that you can execute with it, and I think this is why, you know, designers love this card to the extent that they kept it through two different uh, rotation cycles. Um, Fairy leaves a lot of imagination to the deck builder, and you know, really rewards you if you can find a nice way to use Fairy, whether as a support breaker or as a primary breaker, and it's very distinct. Uh, and you know it, it provides a very different angle of attack to your traditional static uh, icebreaker, so it's really cool design. And you know I'm sure that uh, the combos that I've covered are not exhaustive at all. I'm sure many of you out there would have played this card since it's a timeless uh, card that has existed for a very long time, and perhaps found some combos that I did not mention in this video. What sort of fairy combos have you tried out? Let me know in the comment section. Let everyone know. And, you know, uh, try them out for yourself. You might be su pleasantly surprised at how effective Fairy might be. Till next time though, thanks for watching, and as always, happy net running. See you in the next video.